And we welcome you to Mixed Media Days 2021. Today we are joined uh, by the Stillwell Indians. First time they are here joining us at Media Days. We're glad to have them. Uh, their head coach is uh, Don Harrison, 1-9 and nine last season coach. But uh, before we talk about last season, since this is your first year uh, with us, let's talk a little bit about your background. I know it's your second year okay. at, at Stillwell, but uh, I believe you coached a little bit over in Arkansas, didn't you? Yes, yeah, so I've been coaching uh, 17 years um, and uh, all of it in Arkansas, but started off in the equipment room for the University of Arkansas, worked my way up to being the quarterback's coach's assistant. And uh, that's really where I kind of got going and ended up, uh, you, you know, after college uh, using that. And I got a job working for Gus Malzahn at Springdale High School. Mm -hmm. After that, I worked for Rick Jones at Greenwood for six years. I went on to Newport, Arkansas, which is on clear on the other side of the state, but very prestigious program in Arkansas. Uh, when I got there, they had made the playoffs 26 years in a row. We extended it another four years. So I was athletic director and head coach there for four years. Left, came to Lincoln. A lot of my family in Elkins, Prairie Grove area, so we wanted to get back home. So Lincoln job opened up. I was there five years. Um, they had only been to the playoffs one time. We went three out of five times uh, being there. Had an eight and two year. Had a really good year uh, in 2018. So, uh, you know, turn, got to the point where I've turned some things around and the job is still well opened up and, uh, you know, I got the chance to go over and talk to them and, and they kind of showed me their vision of the program and, and wanted to see if I could come there and turn it around like I did Lincoln and some other places. So uh, used my experience of going to places that weren't doing so good at the time and, and getting them going in a better direction. Yeah, some of those uh, – I've actually lived in Northwest Arkansas and Gus Malzahn and Springdale and Mitch Mustaine, everybody were, were ruling the roost. Oh, yeah. So I uh, definitely know where you're coming from, that background. Of course, last year was your first uh, season. Uh, again, it was tough for everybody, yeah. but I, I know it really hit you guys tough as well. But uh, let's talk about 2020 and what you can bring, bring from last year, if anything, to this year. Well, number one thing was we, we – we did a good job and not being able to see the kids, but reaching out to kids and getting a lot of kids to come out. Uh, and uh, we ended up, I want to say, with almost 50 at one point. Um, again, starting off playing a, a big high school, Super 7 over in, in Arkansas and Rogers, but we competed, we did really well. And then uh, getting our first win versus Gentry the following week, that was big. Uh, rolled it into conference and, and like, uh, you know, broken bow, played within one score of them. Really good game. Uh, came down to the wire, and, and they just had a couple of things go their way late. Uh, next week, Fort Gibson came, same thing. Really good game back and forth. They made some plays down the stretch that we didn't. Lost another one-score game to Fort Gibson. So we felt like things were going in the right direction. I think the kids in the community could see things were getting better. But like I, like at that point, that's when COVID, we started, well, this kid's quarantined for two weeks. And then this kid was quarantined for two weeks. And then it got so bad at one point, we got shut down. And uh, that was tough. That was tough on everybody. That was tough on not just the, the, the kids and, and the community, but that was tough on us coaches too. I mean, we were literally in the locker room getting ready to get on the bus to go to McLean, and they walked in and said, you're not going anywhere. They're shutting us down. Um, and that was, that, was, that was really tough. And, like, we were, I think we were out for two and a half weeks, and we, you know, couldn't practice, couldn't come to school, all that stuff. First day we came back, we came back on a Friday, we played South all that night. And, you know, the administration gave me the choice. They, they told us, they said, you can go ahead and cancel the rest of the season, not play Friday night. You know, you hadn't been able to practice for two weeks and things like that. And I asked the kids and they all said, no, we want to play. And so, I mean, that just tells you what kind of kids we have at Stillwell. I mean, almost a little more than two weeks out, no running, can't practice, anything like that. And they said, no, we're going to go play. So they, we got padded up and we went Friday night and we played. And, and uh, you know, just a testament to the, the young men that we have there and, and, you know, why I think it's it's worth staying here and, and at Stillwell and, and keep pushing forward with what I think this program can be is because those kids could have easily said, yeah, we're, we're not going to go play. You know, we're done. They, they wanted to finish and they wanted to play. And, and so take what I can take from last year is a lot of young guys had to play. Now those young guys that were sophomores or seniors and those guys are sophomores or juniors, those guys that were juniors are now seniors. We had to play a lot of young guys. And uh, especially when we started getting into COVID and people started getting injured, people started getting quarantined. A lot of sophomores, some freshmen had to step up and play and they stepped up and they did really well. And I hope that we can take those kind of experiences. Second year going into the system, not changing the offense, not changing the defense, running the same stuff we did last year. I think that's going to be a big help as well. Uh, let's start on the offensive side of the ball. Let's, let's talk a little bit about 
your philosophy on offense and maybe who are some of your, maybe your quarterback, your receivers, yeah. that, that type of deal? Yeah, well, uh, offensive side of the ball, uh, we're, we're a spread football team. Um, we can go and, and get into some power sets. Uh, when I got to Stowell last year, I did notice we didn't have that many guys that could run and catch that well, but we had a lot of fullback tight end type bodies. So we went to some more power sets. We went into some more two back stuff to help us move the ball. Um, and I thought that worked out well, but you know, being with Rick Jones for six years, Rick always only had one tailback, but Coach Malzon sometimes we had three guys in the game. So I've got a little, you know, I've, I've been with both to the point where I can do both and I can move it around a little bit. And these guys did a really good job uh, of, of being able to spread it out, bring it back in, spread it out, bring it back in. Um, and so I was really proud of them about that. They took to the system really well. We didn't have any spring football. We didn't have any summer stuff we could do. First day that we could touch a football, we started installing stuff, and, and they learned it really fast, so that was awesome. But, you know, uh, offensively, I'd say we run the ball 60% of the time, 40% of the time we throw. Um, coming into this year, we have, uh, we're going to have a competition at quarterback with uh, Trey Chukulate, who is a – sophomore and uh, Kanan Meek down there who is a junior they're going to compete for the starting spot and um, you know we're going to go on from there but we're really happy with our O-line got a lot of, of uh, guys returning on the offensive line so that that helps uh, we feel like we got a lot of experience there and we can fall back on that leadership uh, lost lost a couple of uh, well three actually three of our starting receivers are gone uh, we lost our, our X our Z and our Y uh, so uh, we only have one guy coming back that uh, started and played in every game, which was Ethan Richards. And so we're going to lean on Ethan a lot. But we really are excited about some guys like Dalton Christie, some guys like Lyric Howard, uh, being able to move a guy like Adam Phillips out of the backfield to wide receiver. We're really excited about him being able to play some receiver this year. So we don't feel like that's going to be something we're – we're worried about. Um, of course, having you know two guys play quarterback that didn't uh, start a, a game last year, they're going to have to be. That's going to be a concern that we have, and we're going to have to have those guys have great practices to get ready for the season. Let's just flip the ball around defensively. Uh, what's your scheme there? Uh, we're a three-four-four-two hybrid. Um, so a lot of the time, it's just going to be based on who we're playing. Uh, and what they're doing, but uh, we our base defense is a three-four, but we can move into a four-front real easy. Uh, we're going to try a lot of uh, package stuff this year, where you know two or three guys may be coming off the field, two or three guys coming on. The difference between first down and ten and third down and nine. We're going to try some of that with personnel stuff, bringing in some extra extra coverage guys at times. Uh, we're really going to focus on trying to get uh, more more pressure on quarterbacks. I felt like late in the games last year, that Broken Bow game and that Fort Gibson game, we did really good. And then in the fourth quarter, we weren't getting any pressure and that cost us down the stretch. They were completing some long passes and our guys can't cover for five or six seconds. And what the problem was is we weren't blitzing, we were just sending three guys. So we're gonna have to focus a lot this year on, on getting pressure, bringing four or five man packages and being able to cover on the back end as well. Uh, let's take a look at your schedule real quick, and I know you can only play who you, who you play, but uh, three Arkansas teams in the yeah. non in the non district, including you mentioned Rogers. Who, yes, if y'all don't know, that's a seven A school. That's a big school that's over a big there. School. So yeah, uh, wasn't there when they made the schedule. wasn't wasn't my choice. Uh, <laughs> but you know, again, like you said, you don't get a choice of who you're playing. But you know, I felt like last year um, we went to Rogers, and and uh, it was a good game into about the middle of the second quarter and then we had back-to-back -back turnovers and it got away from us real quick but even looking at it going into probably into the third quarter when we finally they got up so far we actually pulled starters and they they pulled their starters and, and we played a lot of second and third team guys into that third quarter we had 350 yards of offense so it wasn't like we weren't moving the ball we were going up and down the field and, and doing really well we were just making bad mistakes inside the red zone and again a lot of sophomores a lot of juniors that hadn't played so they're making a lot of mental mistakes we get penalties or we had turnovers um and so that cost us a little bit but when we went back and looked at it we were really we were really happy on the offensive side because I think in three quarters we rushed for almost 200 yards. So if we felt like we could move the ball all year long. Uh, the Gentry game, of course, that was awesome. We, we won 30, uh, 33 to 6 or 33 to 8. 
Um, and, it, you know, we that was one of the – I think that was the time we showed the kids that if they go out and execute the game plan, they do the things that we know they're capable of. I mean, we controlled that game from the get-go. We played really well on both sides of the ball. We played really well in the kicking game. Uh, and then, you know, Prairie Grove is a very good football team. Uh, they're now, I think they 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 were told the other day, not too long ago, they're moving up to 5A. So it's a it's a bigger one of the bigger schools in, in Arkansas as well, and they're very tradition rich. They're uh, I know the coach. I, I I was in the conference with them when I was at Lincoln. Um, Danny Asher is a great coach. He's been there a long time. He has his system. Um, so those kids, and that's the other thing that's different that that I've seen at Stillwell versus a lot of the other places, those kids have been running that offense and that defense since they were in the third grade. I mean, they've been running it together since they were little kids. And then, you know, it makes a big difference. We're here. We get kids in ninth grade that are coming from either K-8s or other schools, and, and some of them have never played 11-man, and we're trying to coach them up to play 11-man as quickly as possible, which it's it's the same game. It's blocking, it's tackling. But – it's a little wider. It's a little different, and so uh, they're gonna have they have to catch on a little quicker. But yeah, starting off with three Arkansas teams is is a little weird. But we are right there on the border, so it, it's not very long for travel. Yeah, and of course, uh, traditional games uh, against uh, Salisaw and uh, Muldrow and the four A four that uh, and that this district kind of changes a little bit. But it seems like uh, you and Salisaw Broken Bow are kind of the mainstays. Yeah, uh, uh, is that good? And you like playing the same teams? Is that good? is that easier for a coach, or does it matter? It, it is easier, in my opinion. You get to know the coaches a little more, their tendencies, what they like to do, um, what they don't like to do, what they're gonna, when they're going to take a chance, when they're not going to take a chance. And then, of course, playing those same teams, you end up and get a lot of film on guys, and that's always helpful. All right, uh, we're going to talk to some of your players now. We'll start over here on the very end, <laughs> yeah. Kanan Mink. Uh, we got him a safety, but we said that you may be playing some quarterback, uh, Kanan uh, uh, if it is you at quarterback this this season, uh, how do you feel not playing quarterback at all, like you said, but uh, how do you feel confidence-wise uh, if you have to step into that position? Well, during K-8 through eight at Zion, I played quarterback, but we didn't ever really throw the ball, so it's going to be different. But and you you, you, do, you do know how to call signals and stuff, though. Yeah, <laughs> but, I mean, we just basically ran the ball because we were good at it, and we just beat people like that. And then, uh, of course, going to play safety as well. A lot of teams in your district like to throw the ball around. Uh, how do you think you guys can do on defense this year? Well, our our safeties and our corners, we're all pretty young. We have one senior that's a safety, and the rest are sophomores, I think. But uh, I think we'll be all right if we can just stay to how we play and cover how we cover. and. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, let's let's hand the ball over here or the, the mic over here. I, I'm ready for football. I'm calling it football uh, already. Uh, Briar Thurber, center, looks like a center. Uh, <laughs> it's awesome. So uh, again, we talk about throwing the ball, running the ball, all this, sir. But it, if the offensive line isn't working, I don't really think any of it matters. So tell me, so how do you, how do you, how's the offensive line looking so far? Um, again, we got a few young guys. How many, how many seniors we have? On the O line. There's two. Yeah, two seniors on the line. The rest are juniors, I believe. And most of the guys have been playing on the line have been playing on the line their whole lives. So I think we're, we'll be pretty solid on the line. Yeah, and that's that's big. Sometimes in these schools, these kids, you just get who you get. But yeah. uh, that's got to be big, right? I mean, I'm playing there the whole time. All right, we'll go over here. Tyler Cochran, tackle. Uh, Again, looks like a tackle. You got the size coach. <laughs> yeah. uh, we, we, that is for sure. Tyler, man, kind of the same thing uh, uh, on the offensive side. And, and uh, how are you guys? How do you think you're going to do this year on the line? Uh, I think we're going to do a lot better uh, than previous years. Uh, coach Harrison's helped us a lot on the line. It's uh, been a, been different than what we were used to. Um, I think we're actually going to do pretty good this year. The line. Learned a lot last year. It was hard. Uh, is that I, is that good sometimes learning like I'm a, like throwing into the fire? I know that's not ideal for a coach, but uh, what about you as a player? Is that maybe the best way to learn? Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, you get your experience a lot quicker, and you learn scenarios faster than you normally would just watching. Instead of when you're throwing to the fire, then. Uh, 
you're right there and you see it firsthand. Yeah, it's either, it's either go or go home. Well, Coach, we're so glad you guys could join us this year. We're, we're Thank glad, you for inviting us. Yeah, we're glad you're here. And, uh, of course, we'll see you when you play Silence at least and maybe some more other games in there. But uh, Stillwell Indians, 4A4, we uh, wish you nothing but success and good luck this season. Thank you.